Hey folks, before we start today's video, I just want to let you know that I daily vlog at fromthefield.tv. That's where I post all of my videos now, or most of my videos. So I vlog every single day on the homestead here. Today there was five vlogs, or this week there was five vlogs, and they're all up at fromthefield.tv. If you're interested in any of the details of the work that I'm doing here on my homestead, you can go there, check it out, sign up for seven days for free without any commitment. And if you're not happy, you can cancel there, no questions asked. Welcome to your weekly update for the week of July 18th through the 22nd. And we're up here on my off-grid prepper homestead. And we got a lot done this week. And I'll take you guys through kind of three or four things that were the big um, jobs that we finished this week. Though nothing is ever 100% finished, but uh, finished enough to talk about it. So we're standing in my third greenhouse on my property. This one is the call it the most stripped down and simple greenhouse that I have on the homestead. I kind of have three levels of greenhouses on my homestead and I, I did this intentionally. I've got my Paso Solar greenhouse which is my most expensive as far as uh, well cost but infrastructure it's uh, it's fully year-round. Um, it's heated, it has a climate battery, I can grow crops in there year round with with very little uh, inputs my second greenhouse which we'll go look at which we've we've almost finished we've made some big big strides on this week um, is somewhere in between the three this one is heated it has a smaller climate battery it's the same uh, bow infrastructure as this high tunnel uh, but it can function in a couple different ways it can um, it could be a cold tunnel like this if I wanted to keep it cool and have cool crops in it over the winter, but it could also be a hot house. I could just turn up the heat in it. This greenhouse is your basic, um, some people call these caterpillar tunnels. I just like to call them high tunnels. This is a single layer poly high tunnel, unheated, no um, year round infrastructure in it. However, this greenhouse will have cold weather, um, overwintered crops in it all winter. And so the plan for this tunnel is probably by the end of the week when I have all the beds finished. Uh, shortly after that, we'll be putting crops in here that like the cool and sit in sort of a dormant overwintered state throughout the, the winter. So we'll have broccolinis in here. Uh, we'll have uh, cauliflower. We'll have kale, carrots, beets. We'll have some celery transplants in here. Um, might be missing a few things, but basically a bunch of crops that can handle the cold and um, really only do well in a dormant state. You know, some of the some of the uh, those crops that I mentioned, if you do those crops over the winter in a heated greenhouse, they actually run into problems. And I, I don't know why that is, but um, having short days and long nights but warm kind of goes against their nature, so they just don't really work. Anytime I've done kale or spinach, spinach is another one I didn't mention that's going in here. Anytime I've done those uh, crops in my Passasola greenhouses, they just get problematic. They get lanky, they get kind of weird. Whereas in a cold house, the strategy here is to get these crops in at the late summer so that they're fully established by the time winter arrives. So that would be end of October, early November, and then they just sit there in a dormant state and you just harvest from them throughout the winter. And they wax and wane a little bit as you get from cold, like really cold, to warm in the greenhouse, and then you harvest them when they're in that warm state. I can't come out in this greenhouse uh, when it's minus 20 Celsius outside and expect to harvest carrots, but I can um, if it's sunny and the, uh, the ground is not frozen, I can come and harvest any of these crops throughout the winter. So we've got lots of time to show you that throughout the winter, but that's the plan for this greenhouse. So there's some uh, simple infrastructure on this one. I'll just talk about, you've seen a little bit of this 
uh, happening throughout the weeks. We've got our, our concrete simple uh, stem wall foundation, five inch thick. And this foundation, I, I really like this actually. Now that I've done my greenhouse this way, I can't really imagine doing greenhouses the old way where I just pound in ground posts into the ground. This made it so that everything was straight and flush as I worked um, above and put on my toe kick and hip boards and all that. But it also means that I'm, I'm fairly impervious to big winds and weather, uh, which is really important for me. We're up on a mountain, we're exposed. We do get some pretty brutal wind up here. I wouldn't say it's extreme, as extreme as you might get in the prairies or places like that, but, it's, but it, it, can be, it can be fairly brutal. So this foundation is gonna help with that. And um, so there's gonna be four beds in here. They're gonna be 36 feet long. This is a 40 foot wide tunnel. And I'll just explain a little bit of the infrastructure on here. Um, so we've got channel lock on the, what I call these hip boards, though they're far above my hip, and these are toe kick boards. They're channeled in, and then we've got aircraft cable wires uh, that, that are plumbed to fit over every bed in here six inches from the end. So that way I can trellis anything in this greenhouse. I'll probably put tomatoes in here next year. Um, and then this way I can rotate different warm weather crops between my, my tunnels. And so um, other than that, it's a single layer poly. One of the um, things that I'm doing with this greenhouse to help me in the winter is I'll be offsetting my first beds that start, um, there's four beds in here, 30 inch wide, one foot in between, but these ones will be offset 18 inches off the foundation. They'll be hilled up, raised beds, just like I've done with all the other ones. And then there'll be a thick layer of mulch in the walkways. And so the idea here is that I'm keeping it off the wall so that it's less cold. Often what happens in a high tunnel, an unheated high tunnel especially, is that your end beds, sometimes people like to push them right to the end, and I've certainly done that myself over the years, is not only do you get um, water dripping down as it you know, the humidity rises in a greenhouse, it condenses on the poly, it slides down. So the ends are always wetter, but then they're also always colder because it's closer to the outside. And so my idea here was offsetting at 18 inches gives me that much more of a buffer. Not to mention the fact that I have a five inch concrete wall separating me from the outside as well. As I've got uh, three inch uh, insulation on the outside as well. And so, this is really simple, but what I did was I basically just put the insulation right up against the foundation. And then I, I, I had a custom flashing built. And um, this is all gonna get covered up in earth actually up to the drip edge of this flashing. But uh, just another layer of, um, uh, of insulation. And actually I have to thank one of the viewers on the YouTube channel here for saying, hey Curtis, you might as well just insulate it. And I said, you know what, you're right. And so I kind of thought about how I was going to do that for a while. And at first I was just going to insulate it outside to keep it simple or insulate it inside thinking that it would be simple, but it wasn't actually, because then if that insulation is exposed or even covered up in dirt, you're going to walk in there and it's going to get kind of messed up over time. So I thought, okay, let's put it outside. And I had some of my friends uh, at the uh, sheet metal shop here in town just, um, build me these flashings and so they're three inch by four inch with a slight bright call it 85 degree slope down to three inch drip edge and then uh, that way it looks cleaner and so the insulation is just butted up right to that right at the moment i've got some rocks holding it in place but i'll come in here with sand to finish this out so it's nice and smooth as a walkway i might eventually put another small bed on this part of the terrace but um, that's essentially how it's going to work and in the winter time, snow will shed down and I'll probably come out and shovel it off the terrace. And um, what we're also gonna do on this actually is we're going to put a French drain on here. So because the greenhouse essentially, as water comes down, the, the water always concentrates on the end and that can cause problems. It'll cause problems for me in a couple different ways. ways. One is that if I have water continuously beating down on the area on the outside of the greenhouse, it's potentially an erosion issue. And this terrace, we've totally built up. There was a natural kind of flat-ish zone here, but we really built this up. And it is built with 
compacted rock overburden material that came from our house building construction site. Um, but still, I don't want to over erode it. And so I'm going to put a French drain in, which is drain tile. You've seen me do in many other videos and it will weep all the way out. So on both sides of the greenhouse, we can come over onto this side for a second. Now it's a bit of a, a funnel here because I've got my terrace on one side, my greenhouse here. Fortunately, I tried to, I tried to get this as far off here as I could because in the winter, you are gonna have snow building up in here. So I'm gonna have to come in. My plan is to use my BCS um, walk behind tractor with my snow blower. And once I firm, like uh, smooth this out, I'll be blowing the snow out some way so it doesn't keep building up. But this is this would be a very important part to put our French drain in. And so essentially, um, the ground actually slopes down here. And that's why the, the, uh, the concrete is higher on this side than it is on this side. And so we'll just have some drain tile going here. I'll, I'll put some sand up against it, and then I'll bury it in drain rock. And then that's what will be exposed as drain rock, at least for a foot all around the side. And so water will weep off the greenhouse, come down the terrace, it'll hit the drain tile, and it'll go around and it'll dump out over the edge. So that's the plan there. Um, one other quick feature on this greenhouse that I didn't mention, which is something I'll mention in another video, about greenhouses and something I've started doing on all of my tunnels that have roll up sides. This will have roll up sides eventually, though it's not a priority at the moment, is I've put in these corner polys. So essentially I have another layer of poly that's channeled in on the last two bows. And the reason for that is that when my roll up sides are, be, are active on the shoulder seasons, when they're rolled down, if you don't have this other piece of poly in here, wind can just blow right in and it can cool your crops on the corner. And you'll often see this in high tunnels where you have the crops that are on these corner edges are a little bit less developed than stuff on the inside. So these corner polys um, will kind of fix that, mitigate that, that whole thing from happening. So yeah, so this puppy is done for the most part. I mean, I've got to close in my end walls, but I'm not going to do that for a while because I need to have access for my skid steer. And you can see I've started to bring in my subsoil to uh, bring the whole level up of this. And then um, I'll be shaping beds as, you, as you've seen me do in a number of videos. But what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to do it in thirds. So I'll bring in subsoil till oh, maybe, maybe half um, till about here. I'll shape half the beds, though these are going to be continuous beds, just for efficiency in the greenhouse. I'll shape them. I'll bring in my topsoil on those beds. That way I have access in with my machine and I'm not schlepping buckets of soil and, and compost or mulch the whole length of the greenhouse. So the machine, uh, just using the machine as best as I can. And so we'll finish these half and then move on to the next half. And then these will, this will all be planted out in the next coming weeks. I've already got the crops for this started in plugs. And my uh, carrots will be seeded in here, hopefully within the second week of August. You know, that's something that we're coming up on right now, folks, is if you are living in the Northern Hemisphere and you're in a climate zone that's, you know, anywhere below seven, you need to start planting your your fall crops and your overwintered crops. And so that's what, what's really starting to happen now around here is we've got all kinds of plugs started in the nursery and then we'll be direct seeding the last crops uh, to get us into winter. And a really important one for me is carrots. I, they're a, a very nutritious, sweet and um, dense food that you can grow, that you can have all winter long. So about the second week of August, we'll be seeding carrots in here and um, that's a little earlier than I'd like based on when I have the soil ready because typically I like to stale seed bed the soil for at least two weeks. But it turns out that the soil that I've been mining from my little soil pit is not very weedy. So I'm quite confident that I can be seeding a crop like carrots in here just a week after building these beds and have success with it. So that's it for this greenhouse for now. Let's head up and check out some other stuff. I just wanted to show you guys something. This is the first terrace that I've built. I built on the homestead. And um, I've learned a lot since building this one. 
And this one, I didn't screen the soil, though I picked out rocks, put a lot of time into it, but I made quite a number of mistakes on this. One is that I didn't finish it. I didn't separate my topsoil as best as I could that I'm doing now on here, and you can, you can kind of see it. And uh, every time I look at this terrace, it bums me out a little bit. But one thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to, once these crops come out, um, I'm going to finish with new topsoil on here. And I actually am going to do that on my onion crop. Now, it's incredible how slow these crops are growing. It's quite, it's kind of uh, concerning a little bit. But what I put it down to is, well, one, we had a really cold spring. That's when all this stuff was planted. And two, this soil wasn't conditioned as good as it could be. And so I think those two things combined are what's limiting my growth here. Been terrible with beans this year. These beans are just absolutely terrible. Uh, barely growing at all. Fortunately, the stuff in my greenhouse has done great. These carrots are really slow growing, but we will get a harvest before fall. These potatoes, for sure, will get a harvest before fall. Now, my onions, on the other hand, I am concerned with. And what I'm going to do is I've got some powdered blood meal. I'm going to re-fertilize these. I'm gonna sprinkle blood meal on the bed just to give them a big injection of nitrogen. And then I'm just going to sprinkle some new topsoil on them to, to, to cover that up. And then my hope is that that will accelerate the growth of these because these are not nearly as big as they should be for this time of season, but it is anomalous. And so that's a little plan there. And then one thing we'll be doing shortly after that is bringing in mulch to mulch these beds out just like I did all the other ones. So we're up here in the home zone, I call it, the home zone terrace, and because uh, it's closest to our cabin that we live in. And I've got good germination on all these fall crops. I've got two more beds on the end that are gonna go to cabbage, probably next week, that have been started in plugs. And I've got some, these are all bush beans that we're gonna grow for drying. I've got a short bed of carrots in there and a short bed of basil, and my potatoes are coming along well. But I just wanted to show this, uh, just to circle back a little bit to what I was saying about the late summer and the fall and how important it is, if you wanna have food throughout the winter, that you act in the summer. It's absolutely crucial because what happens as we approach the fall equinox, you know, all of our seasons change, uh, quite radically in the northern hemisphere, and it would be the same in the in the southern hemisphere, but our or, or, or opposite in in a way in the southern hemisphere. But when we come to the summer solstice, our days are getting longer. The sun's higher in the sky, and the ambient temperatures are just a lot higher. And now, as we are approaching the fall equinox, the days are getting shorter. And what seems to happen, at least on my observation, is that. Once you get into September, you really start to notice the significant shorter days. And it seems to exponentially get shorter as you approach that fall equinox. And so that's why it's so important to have your crops established in the late summer. So that's really, um, you know, some crops, if you're gonna do them in, as transplants, if they're 90 day crops or more, you're gonna start those as trans in the nursery at the end of June or very early July, they're gonna get transplanted uh, some point in July, and then you'll have them ready before end of October. Direct seeded crops, 60 to 70 day crops like carrots or beets, those are gonna be seeded anywhere between the last week of July and the second week of August, depending on your climate zone. And that's where a lot of this stuff, I, I basically looked at this, you know, these beans are about a 60 to 70 day crop. Uh, but I wanted to have them dry out. So if I just wanted to get fresh beans, I would have planted these, I could have planted these later, but I want them to dry out so that I can get a dry bean harvest. So I planted these in early July and uh, they're coming along well. And uh, hopefully we get this stuff before it gets too cold. I'm still learning all the nuances of our growing season up here. And it's, it seems to be uh, radically different than last year. But one thing I've learned farming over the last 12 years is that in most in actually in every single year I farmed the year previous was unlike the last so we're in a constant state of flux so I, I'm kind of making an educated guess that we won't have as cold of a spring next year as we did la this year but we'll see fingers crossed but um, one thing I'll add as a side note is all of the stuff that I'm growing I'm also buying the stuff too 
you know, there's a serious chance that we could see some major food shortages this fall and winter. And so I don't want to be just dependent on what I'm growing here. Next year, I have a lot more infrastructure in place. I'll be able to have a lot more success on the garden. But this year I'm building and gardening, which is a challenge. And so the, 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 you can still buy product off the shelf. So I'm stocking up as if I didn't have this stuff and this stuff is just a bonus. So that's just a side note. On the greenhouse here behind me, we have essentially finished all of the siding. There's a couple little things we got to do. We have to finish those little sub roofs there for my tool wall. And we got a couple pieces of odds and ends steel here and there to finish. And this is not painted yet, but we've got 95% of this job done now. My one friend, John, did all of this himself. He did an incredible job. And um, yeah, once we build our house, it's going to be this, it's going to match that as far as uh, steel, galvalum, um, corrugated steel on the bottom skirting, and then hardy plank up top. The hardy plank, I think we're going to paint like a darker color because once we have our little sub roofs that have the copper penny style roofing um, and the, the, the galvalum steel, it'll be a nice contrast. We, I was helping John on the eastern side of it the other day and the reflection of the sun was absolutely insane. You had to wear sunglasses. And so it made me really realize, yeah, a darker color is probably going to be better. And in the winter, that'll stand out a lot more. But uh, yeah, that project is almost completely done. And so I'm a little, you know, I wish I could have had my house built by this time. But essentially, that is a house. That's bigger than most houses. So, you know, we've really focused on the, the growing infrastructure this year, the power infrastructure. And we're comfortable in where we're living right now. So we're gonna, we're gonna do one more winter in there and then next year just focus totally on building the house. All right, the last thing I wanna show you folks is these, I call this the special high tunnel. This is the one that's kind of the, th the, the second in line. Past the solar greenhouse is the number one. This is the number two. The one we started with is the number three. And um, we've got the skirting finish with this. I'm gonna, there's gonna be a little bit of earthworks to bring up the, uh, the earth here so that the, the bottom of the steel gets buried. But this actually took quite a bit of time to do all this. It's, it's simple, it looks like simple stuff, but it's not. A lot of this sheet metal work is very detail orientated, but we've got all of our, our siding that's on the outside of our uh, insulation. And uh, we've got our flashing, our drip edge. So water will come down and drip over top of this. And it looks cool. Um, the flashing, uh, we did a little bit more detail work on this. The, the corners are a lot more uh, detailed. There's a lot more to it with, with the way this kind of walks up. So there was a lot more work regarding that. There will eventually be roll up sides on this, but at the moment I've just got my poly uh, just kind of rolled on itself and clipped so that it's just kind of a little bit neater looking. And you can also see I've got my uh, blower running. So we've got our air gap between our poly here. And uh, in winter, that's going to give us about an R5 of insulation value. So with, with heating this greenhouse, we'll be able to keep crops in here all winter long. Um, with this greenhouse, I can do overwintered crops if I want to, but I could also push my tomatoes right up until Christmas in, in here. Uh, just depends on how much we want to heat it. The end walls are still not complete. I've got to do some trim around the doors and I've got them temporarily opened just to ventilate it better because I'm not, I don't have the roll up sides active at the moment. But yeah, that's another uh, fairly big project that uh, we can check off the list. All right, that's it for this weekly update, folks. If you guys want to see more detailed videos of what I do on the day-to-day -day on the homestead, you can head, to, head over to fromthefield.tv. I post daily there. There's actually a lot more stuff that gets done every week and all those details are in those videos. In these videos, I just kind of show you the highlights, the big things that we, that we did as an overview. Uh, so that's up from the field.tv. If you guys like this video, smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you can do that as well and share and like the videos with your friends. All right, I'll see you in the next one.